you know, do your tweets hurt the company? Are there Tesla owners who say, I don't agree with his political position because, and I know it because he shares so much of it. Or are there advertisers on Twitter that Linda Yaccarino will come and say, you got to stop, man. Or, you know, I can't get these ads because of some of the things you tweet. You know, I'm reminded of uh, the, the scene in The Princess Bride. Great movie. Great movie. Um, where he confronts the person who killed his father. And he says, Offer me money. Offer me power. I don't care. See, so you just don't care. You want to share what you have to say? I'll say what I want to say, and if, 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 uh, if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. Okay. This is my video update from Nicosia, Cyprus. On this Wednesday, May the 17th, let's talk about some news. And let's start things off with jungle Joseph Burrell the EU foreign minister, the top diplomat in all of Europe, the best diplomat in all of Europe. And he gave an interview to the Financial Times. And in this interview, Jungle Joseph, he warned India to stop refining Russian oil and selling it to the European Union. Jungle Joseph told the Financial Times that the EU, they know what India is doing. They figured it out. And now they are warning India to stop doing it. Stop refining Russian oil and stop exporting that Russian oil to the European Union or else, according to, according to Jungle Joseph, India will face consequences. Most likely sanctions. EU sanctions against India because India is purchasing Russian oil, refining it, and selling it selling it to people that want to buy it, to countries, businesses that need to buy it. But uh, that is unacceptable for Jungle Joseph, Ursula von der Crazy, and the European Union. It's unacceptable for India to do business and make money selling Russian oil. So Jungle Joseph, he has given a warning to India and India's foreign minister, Jai Shankar, he, he fired back at uh, Jungle Joseph and he told the top EU diplomat to take a look at the EU Council rules with regards to the exporting of Russian oil and how India is not breaking any sanctions because according to the EU Council's own rule book you can uh, you can purchase Russian oil and you can sell Russian oil as long as it is uh, mixed in with uh, with other oil and so according to Jai Shankar the foreign minister of India Joseph Burrell can stuff it. <laughs> so that is what, what India's response to Jungle Joseph was. So why is the European Union, why is Burrell and Bonder crazy? Why are they going crazy over Russian oil refined and sold to the European Union? Why is this bothering them so much? Well, I think this bothers them because they've, uh, they've had their, their egos bruised. They've been knocked down a couple of pegs from, from their, their very high elitist pedestals. And the reason for this is because the International Energy Association the IEA, they came out with a report a couple of days ago 
And they basically said that Russian oil exports for the month of April hit a 14-month high. 14-month high. Which, once again, shows that the European Union's sanctions are a complete and utter failure. And I think this, uh, this has prompted Van der Crazy and Borrell and all the EU kleptocrats who have cooked up these sanctions and these embargoes and price ceilings to lash out in anger. And in this instance, Borrell is picking on India. He is lashing out at India and he's blaming India for his own incompetence. The fact that these guys actually believed that their price ceilings and embargoes and sanctions was going to bring Russia's economy to tatters, to tatters. They actually believed that. And with each passing day, Russia's economy gets stronger and stronger. And the EU economy, the EU economies, they get weaker and weaker. And all of this is the fault of Van der Crazy, Michelle, and Burrell. And so they're picking on, on India. They're picking on India and they're lashing out against India. So, you know what? Cut off oil from India. European Union, cut it off. Where are you going to get your oil from? Where? You're going to have to get it from somewhere. So you're going to find somewhere, someone to sell you oil, which is going to be 10 times higher than the price that India is selling you the oil, which is 10 times higher than the price that Russia was selling you the oil. But at the end of the day, you're going to have to find oil from someone. And I will, I will put money on the fact that whatever oil you wind up buying, some of it is going to be Russian oil. So that is the, uh, the threat from Jungle Joseph Burrell. I wonder how that apartment building is going to turn out. They've been building this thing for, for a couple of years. At least it's starting to, to finish up. So uh, we had another um, argument, an argument, say a row between uh, Hungary and Ukraine. And this has to do with the Washington Post article, which came out a couple of days ago. I did a video on this article, which uh, basically claimed that Alensky was plotting a way to blow up the Druzba pipeline, a Hungarian, a critical, critical Hungarian infrastructure, a pipeline that brings oil and I believe oil and gas, this pipeline system, oil and gas to Hungary. And Alensky, he wanted to stick it to Orban. He wanted to, to damage uh, Hungary's economy and hurt Hungary and his idea, well, at the same time hurting Russia. And his idea was to blow up the Druzba pipeline. And the Washington Post reported on this. They cited the, uh, the Discord leaks, the Discord uh, leak documents as, uh, as proof that Alensky was concocting this, this scheme, this plan to blow up the Druzba. And, and the other day, we finally had a response from Hungary. And I don't know if this guy's affiliated with the Orban government. I don't know if he's a part of the Or Orban government. But uh, he's a security expert, and I imagine he's close to the Orban government. He has some sort of relation with the government. So I don't know if this is an official statement, but this security expert, he said that if Ukraine dares to blow up the Druzba pipeline, then it would be a NATO Article 5 scenario. It would trigger NATO Article 5, where you have a country attacking a NATO member state and... Hungary would invoke Article 5. So, I mean, I agree that it would be an Article 5 type of thing if Alensky blew up 
uh, Hungarian infrastructure. But I think that one thing we've learned from the Nord Stream pipeline sabotage is that Article 5 has some, uh, some hidden exceptions. And one of those hidden exceptions is that Article 5 is never invoked when the United States wants to attack NATO members. So when the United States wants to blow up pipelines of other NATO members like they did with the Nord Stream pipeline, well, in that instance, you don't have an Article 5 scenario. And I believe you would have the same type of situation occur should Ukraine decide to blow up the Druzba pipeline. I believe that if Alensky did indeed plot and plan and successfully carry out the sabotage of the Druzba pipeline, I think NATO would just kind of look the other way. <laughs> I don't think they would they would be too too concerned with with the blowing up of the Druzba pipeline by Ukraine. So while I agree with uh, the statement from this Hungarian security expert, I think that, that in this instance, Ukraine kind of has a, has a blank check to, to blow up whatever they want to blow up, even if it means blowing up stuff that belongs to NATO member states. So uh, let's now move on to what is the main story for the day, and that has to do with the Kinzhal, the dagger, the dagger missiles hitting at the Patriot air defense system in Kiev. And so we've all seen the video of what happened, and uh, I think we all have a basic understanding of what is going on. Ukraine says that, uh, and Alensky actually the other day, he said that the Patriot air defense system, they took out six, uh, six Kinzhal missiles, Russia fired six Kinzhal and the Patriot air defense system, miracul miraculously, never done before, never seen before in history, the Patriot uh, missile uh, air defense system, the Patriot missiles, they took out six out of six Kinzhal Russian missiles. A miracle, a miracle indeed, but Ukraine did it. Ukraine accomplished this task. And the Russian, the Russian military, they claim that uh, they didn't fire six Kinzhal missiles. They only fired a couple of Kinzhals. They haven't given an exact number, but they said they fired a lot less than six. And the other missiles they fired, Shoigu actually went on to say that the other missiles that we fired Ukraine doesn't even know what kind of missiles those were. And uh, the, U the Russian military says that their goal of knocking out the Patriot air defense system was successful. They completed the goal that they had set out, which was to identify the Patriot air defense system, see where it is, and then knock it out. They did indeed knock it out with a Kinzhal, but a bunch of the other missiles that they used in order to sniff out where the, uh, where the Patriot systems were placed, well, those were not Kinzhal missiles. And so this six out of six number that Ukraine gives, according to Shoigu, is, is a lie, according to the Russian military. And I believe the Ukraine military even said that they had knocked down 18 out of 18 other missiles and then six out of six Kinzhal. So 100% success rate using the Patriot uh, air defense system. So what is going on here? Well, we've seen the video. We've seen the Patriot air defense system fire off something like 30, 30 Patriot uh, missiles in about two minutes time. And we did see towards the end of the video that is all over the interwebs. We saw a huge explosion at the end, which appears to be one of the Patriot air defense systems. So the Russians hit something. Now, when Alensky was talking about the 100% success rate from the Ukraine military using the Patriot system, 
as he was giving this statement, one of his video statements yesterday evening, CNN at the same time actually ran an article and they said that the Pentagon and U.S. officials are trying to assess the damage that uh, the Kinzhal missile did to the Patriot system. In other words, the United States military, they came out and admitted that the Russians did indeed hit a Patriot air defense system, but they said it was damaged and not destroyed. Now, just the fact that CNN had to put out an article like this and that the, the U.S. military, they actually got CNN to run this article and they claim it was just damaged to me is proof that the Russians did a lot more than, uh, than damage the Patriot system. They took it out. They took it out. That's my thinking. And here's what I believe happened. I don't think this is a very complicated story. I believe the Russians used a whole bunch of decoys, a whole bunch of missiles, maybe drones, decoys. They fired a whole bunch towards Kiev. The Ukraine military, they fired a boatload of uh, Patriot missiles, 30 in two minutes, which comes out to a lot of money. I mean, I've heard that the Patriot missile is anywhere between a couple of hundred thousand dollars. One missile is between a couple hundred thousand dollars all the way up to like one to two million dollars, three million dollars. I've read in some, uh, some analysis that it could be up to three million, three million dollars. So. 30 missiles in two minutes, the Ukraine military wasted a whole lot of, uh, of U.S. money. A whole lot of U.S. money in two minutes. And they fired off a bunch of, uh, of Patriots. And, uh, and the Russians, toward the end, they said, okay, our decoys worked. We know where the, where the Patriot system is. And then they fired a couple of Kinzals and Boom, that was it. That's what happened. And the reason we have this big cover-up, cover up, this big elaborate cover-up where uh, you have CNN saying, oh, well, the Patriot was just damaged. And then you have another uh, military analyst who gave an interview the other day and said that uh, a Kinzhal can never, can never destroy a Patriot system. It's impossible. It can damage it, but it can't destroy it. And you have this big cover-up taking place. And you have Ukraine saying, no, 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 we took out 100% of everything. You have all of this because what's going on here is very embarrassing. It's embarrassing for the Ukraine military and it's embarrassing for the uh, United States, the military industrial complex and, uh, and the Patriot system because it shows that the Russians can absolutely take out the Patriot system. It's not a wonder weapon and they did it with relative ease. And for the Ukrainians, for the Ukraine military, it shows that they're... Uh, but they're very, very jumpy, very panicky, and, and they fired off so many missiles within two minutes that it, that it was just, you know, it made it very easy for the Russians to figure things out. It made it very easy for the Russians to figure things out. And like I said, three, uh, th 30, 30 missiles in two minutes at a couple of hundred thousand dollars to a couple of million dollars per Patriot missile is, is a huge embarrassment. It's a huge embarrassment. And this is coming at a time where the military industrial complex, they are, uh, they're trying to get a $30 billion contract from the Biden White House for defense spending on, you guessed it, air defense systems. And uh, this, this happened at the wrong time for the military industrial complex. So it's, so it's all just very embarrassing for Ukraine, for the United States, for the military industrial complex. And that's why you're seeing a whole bunch of, uh, of cover up taking place. And actually they, uh, they even arrested the Ukraine uh, SBU. They even arrested six bloggers who they claim put out uh, the videos showing the 30 missiles from the Patriot system being fired off to, to try and take out the Russian uh, missiles, the decoys and the Kinzhal. And so they rounded up six bloggers and 
they're going to charge them with whatever, and they could face up to eight years in prison and all of this, uh, this stuff. Just people who, who were just taking videos of what was going on, and they posted all of this on the, the internet, and it, it ruined the, uh, the cover-up is basically what happened, because you know that if we didn't have this video showing the Ukraine military firing off 30 Patriot missiles in two minutes and then showing the big explosion in the end, if we didn't have all of this video out there, then you know that this would have been covered up. We probably wouldn't have even known about it. The Russian Ministry of Defense would have probably put out a statement saying that they destroyed uh, a Patriot system. Ukraine would have denied it. The Pentagon would have denied it. And everyone would have been kind of like, well, you know, it's a uh, it's the Russian military saying this and the Pentagon and the Ukraine saying that, but we don't really have any evidence of anything uh, happening. So no one would, would really know what was going on, but we, we got the videos. And because the, these bloggers put up these, uh, these videos, we know exactly what happened. So that's what I think is going on with this whole Patriot Kinzhal story. I think it's pretty clear cut that that the Russians had a very successful day hunting down the Patriot systems and Ukraine military and the Pentagon. They had a very bad day trying to cover up the destruction or what CNN calls the damage to the Patriot system. And you know this whole this whole narrative about um, the Patriot system being able to take out Kinzhal missiles. I believe that this narrative has been in the works now for a couple of weeks. That's why you saw the whole, the whole uh, Klitschko video showing last week, showing the, the Kinzhal missile that the Patriot system took out. And he was showing all of that off last week because I think that this contract for the, for, for the uh, MIC is uh is super important i think you're looking at 30 billion 30 billion plus and they want to get this contract for uh air defense and they've they've constructed this this narrative that the patriot systems can now all of a sudden take out hypersonic missiles magically they can take out hypersonic missiles and so you know the mic is like well Let's get some orders in. Give us $30 billion. We'll, uh, we'll really develop the Patriot system and the air defense systems a lot more. And also, let's, uh, let's take some orders for this, uh, for this air defense system, which, which can take out Russian uh, hypersonic missiles. You know, a, a wonder weapon, a true miracle weapon, a true miracle weapon. They couldn't do it. It couldn't do it yesterday, but magically today it can do it. And I really believe that this, this whole thing has been a type of, of constructed sales pitch. And they started it last week with the story about the Kinzhal missile being taken down and Klitschko showing the, the remains of, <laughs> of what he tried to pass off as a Kinzhal missile. And everyone was talking about it. And the Pentagon was coming out and saying, you see, we did it. We finally did it. The Patriot system can take out hypersonic missiles. And you saw all of this happening last week. And so you had the events of uh, yesterday. And I think that, uh, that the military industrial complex and Alensky and Ukraine, they're, they're trying to, to make it seem like the Patriot systems can, can take out Kinzals like, like that, you know? Six for six, boom, six for six. That's what, uh, that's what Alensky says. And I think it's a sales pitch because you had this European leaders meeting, which is taking place in, uh, in Iceland. And European leaders, they gathered together in Iceland and, and they talked about how they can, uh, how they can defeat Russia and how they can punish Russia and all of these things. But uh, Alensky, he joined this meeting via video. And Alensky, I don't know if you guys can see the cat in the tree right there. <laughs> and Alensky, he, uh, he joined via video. And what was his, 
his message to European leaders. His message to European leaders was, well, of course, uh, give me, give me money, give me, give me weapons, give me money. Yeah, that's of course, give me weapons, give me money. But what he really said to the European leaders, his main message was, we can take out Russian hypersonic missiles. We did it the other day. We took out six for six. And Alensky said it was something that was thought of to be impossible in the past. That's what he said in his speech. He's like, no one would ever have thought that we could take out six out of six Kinzhal missiles. But we did it, he said. This is what he was, he was telling European leaders. We did it. And he said, if we're united, this was Alensky's sales pitch. If we're all united as Europeans, he said, and we all give money and we all buy weapons and we give Ukraine those weapons, he said, we can accomplish miracles. We can accomplish anything. And we did it the other day with the Patriot system and we took out six Kinzhal hypersonic missiles. That was Alensky's big pitch. And, you know, that was a sales pitch. I was reading, you know, the, the, uh, the reports on his speech and I was like, that's, that's a salesman right there. That's a guy trying to sell you, and he's working on commission. He's working on commission, no doubt about it. So I think this whole Patriot Kinzhal narrative has been in the works now for a couple of weeks. And, and if it wasn't for those damn videos going on the interwebs, I think we would have had another cover-up. And I believe the Pentagon in Ukraine would have ran with the story that Russia threw not six uh, hypersonic missiles. They threw 20, 25 hypersonic missiles towards Kiev and the Patriot system. It took all those missiles out with, uh, with its hands tied behind its back. That would have been the message. That would have been the message. If we didn't have those videos, no doubt about it. But boy, did those videos really, really ruin the game. And that's why you're going to have these, uh, these bloggers arrested. So that is my take on the whole Kinzhal Patriot thing. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What do you think happened? What do you think is going on here? At the end of the day, I think this is all about money and military sales and Alecki wants to get his cut. That's, that's what I think is, uh, is going on. And for the Russians, well, the Russians, they've shown that they can take out Patriot systems, they can take out Leopard tanks, they can take out Storm Shadow missiles. There is no wonder weapon that the U.S. can throw at them. It doesn't exist. What else did we have going on here? Budanov. I did a story on Budanov, the military intel chief, and I said in a video about a week ago that Budanov... That guy is on borrowed time because he's giving a lot of interviews talking about how he's been uh, he's been targeting Russians for uh, assassination and he's been uh, the mastermind behind many of the terrorist attacks inside of Russia. Well, Donov he gave another interview yesterday and he basically admitted that he was the guy. That was behind the uh, the assassination of very high profile Russian uh, journalists, and in this instance, I mean Daria Dugina. And this was this was quite a shocking admission. Now he didn't say Daria Dugina by name, but he implied that he was the mastermind behind her uh, her assassination. So we have this admission from Budanov. I said that the guy is on borrowed time. I think Alensky has a better chance to get out of this alive than Budanov. But uh, he's still, you know, he's still running his mouth and he's still admitting to, to all of these, uh, these crimes and these terrorist acts. I mean, he's proud of it. He's proud of it and, and he's openly admitting it. So uh, what did Russia have to say with Budanov's admission. Maria Zaharova, she responded to Budanov's admission and uh, she condemned what Budanov said. Okay, she condemned it. And she stated 
that this admission was a clear, a clear admission of wrongdoing. Quote, terrorists, those who provide excuses for the Kiev regime and sponsor it are accomplices of terrorists. So she said, terrorists, those who provide excuses for the Kiev regime and sponsor it are accomplices of terrorists. That's what she wrote on Telegram, actually. And then she said, will the UN not notice that again? Hmm. Donov also said in this interview that uh, his intel group, military intel, is actually working very closely with uh, Russian opposition. And in this case, he means Russian opposition for some sort of, uh, of destabilization of Russia and an eventual regime change. That's what he means in that statement. But, you know, uh, okay, Maria Zaharova wrote this on Telegram. Noted, will the UN notice? Of course they won't notice. Will the UN care? No, they will not care. Uh, Budanov obviously feels like he's untouchable. That's why he's, he's making all these statements. He feels that Russia can't touch him. And so he's running his mouth off and admitting to, to committing these acts. The question now is, what does Russia do? What does Russia do? That is the big question. You pretty much now have the guy on record admitting that he's the person behind all of this stuff. What do you do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to throw that out there. What, what is Russia's response to this? How are they going to handle this Budanov guy? Budanov also said that the Russian military is a very good military, but he said it's not the number two military in the world. He said it's not the number one. He said it's not the number two. He said it's somewhere in the top 10. Hmm. An interesting statement. And I think this is a good segue to my final story before I get to my clown world, which is an article from Seymour Hirsch. Seymour Hirsch dropped another article on his Substack with the title, The Ukraine Refugee Question. Now, this is an interesting article. And it's an interesting article because it claims that there is a group of EU countries led by Poland, including Hungary, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. So Poland, Hungary, and the Baltic states. There's this group of countries in the European Union that are actually pushing for Elensky to negotiate a peace deal. Let me say those countries again. Hungary, true. I believe that is true. But Poland and the Baltic nations are pushing Alensky to make peace with Russia, according to the latest Seymour Hirsch article. And he cites various uh, officials in, uh, in the U.S. government as his sources. And they claim, according to Hirsch, these officials... They claim that these EU countries are pretty, are pretty overwhelmed with the refugee crisis. The Ukrainians, millions and millions of Ukrainians that have now uh, moved into countries like Poland and Hungary and Latvia, all, all these Baltic nations, and they pretty much can't take any more of, uh, of this refugee situation. And, and these officials claim that... Poland, for example, is, is not so afraid of Russia anymore. Poland claims that the Russian military is subpar. It was not this big, bad military that Poland thought it was. And Poland, uh, the official says that Poland uh, references the siege of Kiev uh, debacle, where Poland feels that Russia tried to, to take over Kiev and they couldn't even take over an airport and their military crumbled in the siege of Kiev. So they really believe, Polish officials really, really believe the siege of Kiev narrative. I mean, they really have internalized it. And so they believe that the Russian military is so weak that it doesn't really pose a threat. The Russian military has been uh, even, has been weakened even more by this conflict, conflict with Ukraine and uh, with NATO. And Poland's like, you know, we don't need to continue with this. We can't handle the refugees. The refugees are overwhelming. And Russia's really not that big of a military threat either. 
we can easily take out Russia. This is what the Polish, Polish officials are, are, are hinting at. We can easily handle Russia, the Russian military. So let's end this war and, and move on. And that's what this article is, is claiming in summary. I'll put a link to the Substack article. It's not a long read. It's a pretty, pretty short article, but I'll put a link for it down below. And that's what this article is claiming. So it really turns everything upside down where everyone is saying, including myself, that it's Poland and the Baltic nations that are the most, the most bellicose and, and are always escalating with Russia and want to escalate this conflict to the max to the point where Poland is, is even going to move into the west of Ukraine and, and bite off a chunk of, uh, of the west of Ukraine and take Lviv. It seems that this source is telling Hirsch that, no, that's, that's not true. It's actually Poland and the Baltic nations and Hungary that are actually pushing for peace and and they're pushing for peace because of the refugee issue and because the Russian military is eh, it's not a big deal. It's nothing to be worried about. There's no reason to be worried about the Russian military, guys. Don't worry about it. Let's just get peace and the Russian military, well, we can easily handle it. So there's no need to continue with this war and continue to burden ourselves with with the Ukrainian refugees. So that's pretty much what this article is saying. It, it, it even says that these countries, for example, Poland, they're even telling Alensky that they will pay Alensky money. How much money do you want for a peace deal? And Alensky is, is, is always balking. He's saying, no, no, no. Or he's saying, I want more money or stuff like that. They haven't been able to bring Alensky around. And the Biden White House, this article claims, is, is pushing Alensky to escalate more. So the Biden White House wants more escalation. Poland and the Baltic nations want less escalations. Poland and the Baltic nations, and I believe Germany as well. I think uh, Germany was thrown in there. They're, uh, they're willing to pay Alensky whatever money he, he wants. They're negotiating with Alensky. They said that uh, they'll allow Alensky to live in Italy in one of his many mansions and no one will bother him as long as he just negotiates a peace deal and just ends this. But Alensky's like, no, 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 I want more and more and more. I want more weapons. I want more money. Um, you know, I've got the White House, which is backing me. So no deal. And so that's where we are. Anyway, it's an interesting article. It turns everything upside down. But, you know, that's, that's the article. As, as it's being reported on by Seymour Hirsch, I'll, uh, as I said, I'll put a link in the description box down below and... And you guys can read it and judge for yourselves what's, what's going on. What is the truth here? What is really going on with Poland and the Baltic nations and Alensky? So let's do a clown world and wrap this video up. And in this clown world, I, I don't usually say I told you so, but in this instance, I'm going to say I told you so. <laughs> And, uh, and what do I mean by that? I mean that yesterday when the news was coming out about these, this Patriot uh, missile, missile system and the Kinzhal missiles and the fact that Russia sent a whole bunch of missiles into Kiev and all of this news was coming out. I reported on this in uh, my video yesterday. I said that you watch in 24 hours, the collective West media, they're going to come out with an article saying that the fact that Russia sent so many missiles into Kiev is proof that Russia is running out of weapons. They're running out of missiles. And sure enough, CNN ran that article. CNN, Russia is running out of weapons. <laughs> Let's see. Russia may have begun the expanded attacks in an attempt to force Ukraine to delay its highly anticipated counteroffensive, an official said, but Ukraine has been able to withstand the attacks, intercepting a high percentage of the incoming missiles and drones with the layered air defenses provided by Western nations. The expanded attacks may even work to Ukraine's advantage, the official said, as Russia dips deeper into its limited supply of precision munitions. Got that? <laughs> you got that? The fact that Russia sent so many missiles into Kiev, the fact that the Ukraine military fired off 30 Patriot missiles in two minutes is proof, is proof that Russia is running out of missiles. <laughs> They're running out of missiles. So this whole incident that took place the other day in Kiev that has most likely 
led to the destruction of a Patriot air defense system, something that Ukraine cannot afford to lose. This whole instance is actually playing to Ukraine's favor. <laughs> this is an advantage for Ukraine. Russia is running out of weapons. All right, so I will leave it there. And I think if you guys want to stick around with me for uh, two, three minutes, I'll just do a quick update on, uh, on what I know about uh, what's going on with Gonzalo. And to be quite honest, I don't have... I don't have that much information because getting information about what's going on with Gonzalo is very, very difficult. I mean, it's very, very difficult. What I do know is this. I have, I have, uh, I have some good information, which, uh, which is that the U.S. State Department is aware of uh, what's happened to Gonzalo. The U.S. State Department is aware of Gonzalo's arrest. And they are, they either have or they're in the process of, of uh, getting a meeting with Gonzalo in uh, Kharkiv, where, from what I understand, he is being detained. But I also have information which says that the U.S. State Department, while they are, well, they have to, they have to uh, look after American citizens. It's their job, even if they don't agree with the political messaging from that citizen, it's, it's the U.S. State Department's obligation, it's their job to look after American citizens, but uh, the State Department is, uh, is hinting at the fact that uh, Gonzalo is being charged with breaking uh, Ukrainian law. And so that's, that's the update. That's, that's really all I have, except, well, except for this. I did a video on April... April 23rd, I was in Aya Napa and I did a video at the marina of Aya Napa and I talked about a new law that Ukraine had passed, that the Ukrainian parliament had passed and Alensky had signed, which was a law criminalizing social media posts that went against the government. And I talked about this in a video that I did just a few weeks ago. And it looks like that is the law that the Alensky regime used in order to detain Gonzalo. A viewer actually sent me this law a couple of weeks ago, and that viewer said, I think this is the law that they got Gonzalo with. And I actually did a video on that law as well. And in that video, I said that, uh, that Ukraine is becoming the West and the West is becoming Ukraine. And um, I, in another video, I talked about the, the law in Ireland with the hate speech law and all this stuff. And I was, I'm just kind of, I was just kind of saying the message that, you know, all of these social media hate speech uh, laws that are coming out, which criminalizes this stuff. If you go against the regime, I said, it's, it's happening in Ukraine and it's happening in the collective West. Well, it looks like that's the law that, that they got Gonzalo with. That's what it looks like. But um, that's just, that's, that's my assumption. So I'll just say that as well. Anyway, that's the information that I have with, uh, with regards to Gonzalo. So I will say this, and I will leave it here because I think this video may be running a bit long. Um, you know, hit, hit some, uh, some emails towards the State Department. Get some emails towards the U.S. State Department. Get some emails towards uh, uh, the Chilean embassy and just keep on hammering away at, at getting them to do something. I think that's, that's the best course of action that can be taken right now. And when I get more information, I will absolutely uh, pass it on to everybody. Anyway, that's the video. Go to Durant.locals.com, Durant shop, 10% off. Use the code GOODDAY. Take care.